Welcome to uh, this Assertus webinar in conjunction with Cicero. Uh, my name is John Wainwright. I'm the uh, director of Assertus. I've been with Assertus for about ooh, 15 odd years now, so quite a long time. Um, Phil Ayton, uh, Phil is one of the directors at Cicero, uh, one of the founding members of Cicero. Uh, Phil's going to take you through the demonstration of the Cicero uh, system shortly. In terms of just giving you a quick background on Assertus, many of, of, of you that have joined today uh, know Assertus because we work with you already. Um, but I'm just going to take you through a quick overview. Then we're going to, uh, Phil's going to take you through an overview of the Cicero solution, explaining the, uh, what, what it's uh, about. And then I'm going to take you through a, a demonstration of the system to just give you a flavour, and a flavour only, because it's a very big system. Uh, of, of how uh, complex uh, or simple Cicero can be in terms of developing uh, workflows that suit your business uh, tasks. And then if you've got any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to fill in the questions section. Uh, we'll endeavour to answer as many questions as we can, depending on the time. And if we don't have time to answer all of them, then we'll, we'll respond later. So just to um, give you a, an understanding of, of Certus, we're, we're a solutions provider. We are not a software vendor ourselves, we're a reseller, implementation, and then a support partner. Many of you work with us with the iManage document management system. That's pretty much core to what Assertus does and has done for the last uh, 15 or so years. Um, but we also provide a number of other complementary solutions that tightly integrate with, uh, with iManage, and Cicero being one of those. It is one of our newer applications, um, but quite a few of our customers already use it. In fact, we ourselves use it um, as an iManage partner. iManage themselves are a big Cicero user. And uh, when we onboard customers uh, for the iManage system, we have to fill out uh, a bunch of documentation that's all generated automatically by Cicero. So iManage have built their onboarding and their implementation process on the back of Cicero. So perfect really for, uh, for, for, for us, but also for our customers. So before we start, we thought it'd be useful because you know um, my background actually is workflow. I, I used to work for a company called Visualfiles, uh, which was bought a number of years ago by LexisNexis. Some of you may already be using it or still be using it. Um, but but really, workflow um, sort of was more, if you like, the case management. I think what we're seeing more and more is that people are trying to build sort of uh, simple and complex processes, but often don't have the tools to do that provide integration between different solutions and Cicero is ideal for that sort of role. So we're just going to actually run a quick poll um, just to ask a very simple question. Um, so if my colleague could just fly at that, thank you. So do you, do you think that workflow is applicable to your firm? It'd be interesting to just get a quick um, sort of poll on the people that have attended this session to say yes, no or not sure. And then we're going to run the same poll afterwards just to see uh, once you've seen the demonstration, whether you think it is in fact applicable, um, because I, I, I suspect there'll be one or two people on here sort of logging in to sort of um, understand a little bit about what this workflow tool can do. So we'll just leave that up for a few more seconds before we take it down. Okay, thank you very much. And we're going to rerun that um, towards the end of the, uh, the session so that we can actually see and compare and contrast the, uh, the answers. Um, so I'd like to, uh, to hand over now to, to, to my colleague, uh, Phil, who's going to take you through the rest of the presentation. To say, if you've got any questions, please feel free to, to fill in the questions section, and then we'll endeavor to answer the questions later. Okay, I'm gonna turn my webcam off now shortly, um, and I'll, I'll switch it back on when we get to the uh, questions and answers. Thank you. Thanks very much, John. Thanks for your time. So the first question I'm going to pose is, um, what is workflow in legal or professional services? Um, well, workflow basically takes away the uh, the old question of buy versus build. So in the old days, because um, I'm quite an old person, um, people used to either buy a solution or they would go out and rent a bunch of developers or a development shop and build it. Um, that's no longer really an option because coding has become so sophisticated. So the current approach is to use these new breed of no-code or low-code workflow systems. And what can they do for you? Well, they basically um, can solve the kind of problems that you can't really get out of a package. 
um, but without the risk and a huge cost um, around um, development. So a good examples of, of workflows um, in legal, um, the most common example and ones that people will be most aware of is client onboarding. So KYC AML as it's commonly known. Um, so what people need to do is to build um, an SRA compliance onboarding system. So when you get your annual audits, you can prove that you know who your client is. Um, and that's a, a, an example of a workflow, um, if you're doing it properly, that involves both the client and the law firm. Um, so it's a collaborative workflow. And I'm going to show that as, as our example. Um, but other examples of workflow can be things like uh, contract creation and not just automating documents, but actually creating packs of documents, perhaps providing self-service portals to clients where they can fill stuff in and a bunch of documents are created, which is exactly the portal that um, I manage um, use to, to work with um, Assertus, for example. Um, you can use it to um, automate simple templates. You can automate um, complex documents. You can link it in with iManage, Active Directory, um, and things like managing client information requests. We've just done a project uh, around that to smooth that process because a lot of busy work involved in handling client requests. Um, and things like compliance workflows, knowledge management, lots and lots and lots of different applications. And I'm just going to show you an example today so we can use it um, to kind of take you through all the various processes. So we're going to start off by looking at um, how lawyers and clients can participate in a workflow. Now, to do that, I'm actually going to use our website. So if you just type cicero.com into your browser, it'll take you to this page and you can actually go through this demo with me as well. So if you want to see that I'm not just making this up, go ahead and try this yourself. So when you get to cicero.com, um, go to the first button on here, try our demo selection, um, and that will take you to our demo page. And there's a bunch of demos on here and you can go and try all these you know, at your own leisure. But the one we're going to look at is the compliance workflow in the bottom right. So this is an online real-time workflow um, that you're going to see me working on today. Um, this is not an example of a complete KYC system. A complete KYC system might have um, a couple of hundred steps. It's just an example of showing you how a workflow can work and hopefully get your mind thinking about how it can work for you. So let's just imagine we are onboarding a client. So what is the name of the matter that we're going to be doing? So in this case, I'm just going to make up a matter. So I'm going to have um, IBM is going to be merging with Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> like that's going to happen. Um, so first of all, who's going to be the owner of the project? So I've got lists here um, and I can go and have simple lists where I can enter in the project owner, which typically is going to be the lawyer, who their boss is, um, what kind of work profile is this? Now, this is important as we get into it because this is going to affect what happens inside the workflow. Um, what country are we dealing with? Um, and on these lists, by the way, we can actually search on these lists and simply select stuff. So we can have quite long lists on here. So details on the matter. So, um, so we are uh, repping IBM in this case. So we're going to be IBM's lawyers. So what I want to do is I need to go and get IBM's details. And this is our first example of, of low code. So um, in the UK, we have something called Companies House. And I can go ahead and I can search Companies House. Um, and actually get uh, a list of the details of, um, in this case, IBM. So this is a real-time demo. So if you are um, a UK firm and you're doing this, search for yourself, see if you can find your own company. And then we're just going to drag that information directly in from Companies House into um, this form. You'll see it's read-only because I can't go ahead and change it. Other kinds of information that you want to put on here is, you know, how did you get this information? How did you, you know, get the referrer? And this is all going to be part of the KYC kind of process. Who are we dealing with? And then um, from the point of view of the demo, you're not going to get very far um, if you don't put in your email address. Um, so clearly this is a, a blatant um, uh, 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 thing for us to try and capture your email address. Um, but the demo is not going to work until you do that. So um, in a, any kind of workflow, there's going to be bits of the workflow where things just don't happen for a bit. So um, I basically, as a lawyer, have started off the workflow. Um, and the very first thing it's going to do, it's going to send a client engagement letter to my clients. So I'm being both the client and the lawyer here, which is obviously a bit weird, but I kind of have to do that. So um, in terms of the client, the client's going to need to check his inbox um, to make sure that uh, this email's come in. And we're going to be sending him a customized document. So this is using document automation. So the document has been automated using the information that the lawyer has to create a customized letter that is going to be emailed to the client. Oh, marvelous, now it's come in. So we just opened up. So this is my email that's come in. So I am now being the client. Um, it's saying, welcome to us. 
Um, as part of our compliance obligations, we require you to sign and upload our attached engagement letter, which is over here as a PDF. Um, and it's putting some details in here so that I can just get that information. So it's quite important to be able to show them customized information in the email body. So the main thing is here, I've got to sign the engagement letter and return it. Um, so when I open up the engagement letter, it's a PDF. Um, and in here, I have got obviously the details that I've entered in here. Um, I've got things like um, who is the um, uh, the manager. That's the kind of stuff that you've got to you've got to put in there, um, and things like the costs. And a bit later on, when we're looking at the the the, the logic part of it. We're going to say we're going to want to have a cost table, different rates for different kinds of work. So um, as this is a PDF, I can just go in here and sign this. Um, I don't know how you do your signing, but I just go for the cheap and quick option, which is just to use the free version that comes with Adobe, which I find very very useful. So I can go ahead and sign that. And then just save that document um, and then I'm going to upload it. So we'll just stick it into there and save it. So I've now saved that document. And if I just go back to my email, you'll see here it says, please sign the attached document. We've just done that bit. That's great. And upload it using this link. So when I click on that link, it's now going to take me to the client part of the uh, workflow. So I'm effectively on stage two. So stage one was all to do with the law firm and stage, uh, sorry, stage one was to do with the law firm, stage two is to do with the client. Now, as the client, this is the information that I know that you've captured for me, and that could be wrong. So I'm going to go in here and say, no, 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 we're not based there. We're based in London. So I can actually, as the client, I can update the information that you've got on me. And this is very important because all this stuff is audited. So um, I can basically prove now that the client went in and changed that in case there's, there's an issue um, later on. So I need to put the address of who I am in here. Um, and now we've just got some very simple examples of the kind of things that you're going to want to be doing. So you're going to ask some simple questions. There'd actually be a bunch of them here, but an example would be, do you have any political connections? Obviously, that's a really uh, blatant thing in here, and you can write details on there. Um, hopefully, the answer for most people is going to be no, but it's the kind of stuff you have to do in terms of, of uh, uh, money laundering. So what you've got to do is upload the client engagement letter. Um, and you'll see here, I've said quite clearly, this will not work on the public demo. Um, this is purely just from the point of view of our own safety, but you will go ahead and try it. And when you try it, you will get an error message that says upload document error. You don't have access to do that. And that's just that's purely for our own <laughs> um, uh, state of mind so that, you know, we don't worry about you uploading viruses to our servers. So obviously on your system, you'd have that. And we actually have an entire process around handling that, which I'm not doing for the demo. The demo is designed to be as simple as possible. So clearly all we're worried about here um, is showing you how it works. So now I've got another email through. Um, the email, the workflow has paused again, and I'm changing roles again. So I'm now going to be the lawyer that sent, that filled in the original form. So it's telling me that IBM, um, my client, have uploaded their engagement letter. Fantastic. Um, please complete the workflow. So I'm now going to go to stage three of the workflow. And in this stage, and this is just showing off something called a repeater. So quite often as part of the process, you're going to need to um, capture multiple details about multiple things. This can be quite complicated. A good example of that is beneficial owners. So, you know, who are the beneficial owners? Well, we'll put down Phil down there and he's given us a passport um, and there's the ID number. Um, and like I uploaded the document, I'd obviously upload um, uh, that passport as well. We're putting John in there as well. Um, and he's going to do a driving license. And uh, that's his identification number in there. And we'll add that. So we can add these into the um, uh, our list of repeaters. Um, we can also at any point go in, if we make a mistake, for instance, we can go and delete one. Um, we get a little message saying, do you want to delete it? Or we can go and edit it. If I've got John wrong, I can go in there <clears throat> and I can edit it. And let's say he's actually a, a John and we'll update that. So um, we've got those details correct. So I'm still staying as being the law firm now. Um, I've got my stuff back from the, um, typically here, by the way, you'd see the document they've uploaded so you could read it. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do, because it's a KYC workflow, I'm actually going to do a risk assessment. Um, again, we've massively simplified this. So what did they provide you with? They provided us with audited accounts. Select one of the statements below. The client has a complex ownership structure. I'd imagine IBM do. Um, and then I might provide some details on that. Um, and this is this again, I say massively simplified, but the kind of things that you want to be doing. Um, Web-based, you can do this from anywhere. You could do this on your mobile phone, you could do this on a train on the way home. Um, and eventually you're going to get to the partner, and the partner's going to decide whether or not he is happy or he's not happy. Assuming he's happy, he can say he's happy, here's the reasons why he's happy, 
and then he can complete the workflow. And at this stage, what we would do is we would hand over to the um, to 3E or to whatever your account system is, go and create, using the API, go and create the um, account, um, and then email back those details to the lawyer so we can go ahead and build. If you're doing this process yourself, um, feel free to go ahead and say no to that and see you'll actually get a different message with a big X saying, um, at that stage, um, uh, you can't go forward. But that's a, a simple online demo of the KYC. And I believe at this stage, um, if I remember, we're gonna be running another poll. We're running another poll at this stage? I can't remember. I think we decided we were going to. Uh, we, we're gonna run it right at the end, uh, Phil, if that's okay. Okay, right, sorry, I thought we were gonna run a poll at that point. My apologies. So that is the workflow. Um, so we've, we've basically completed the workflow. Um, so I've gone through, just shut these down. I've gone through how lawyers and clients can participate in a workflow. As I say, that's grossly simplified, but a good example of the kind of things that you're going to do and how you have certain inflection points and decisions, in this case, um, vastly simplified. So the big thing about this is these systems are fine, but how can firms create this and more importantly, edit, edit it themselves? So maybe creating it, you wanna leave this to an expert to whoever's providing you with your system, but certainly there's a lot of ongoing stuff that goes on, particularly around stuff like KYC. So I'll just give you a, an example of that. Um, so in KYC, this is something that is um, just from LexisNexis. Um, we're currently on the fifth money laundering directive. They literally, produce one about every 18 months. So the law is continually changing. Um, so you need to be able to edit and update. So it's really important that you don't have to go back to the supplier every single time you want to add a field or add a name or add something to it. Create the whole thing. Although once you get into it, you can start to create more and more processes, but you need to be able to edit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how you go around the process of creating and editing these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a new app. You'll see here, this is my demo system. I've got lots and lots and lots of them. Um, so I'm going to add a new app um, and I'm going to give it a name um, and I'm going to call this um, KYC Demo. Um, and we actually can create lots of different kinds of apps in Cicero. So we can create things like knowledge libraries. We can automate documents. In this case, we're going to do a business process. Um, so I'm going to create a new business process. And the very first thing we want to look at is that form. So we saw as a user, what we were, anything that, that your end user sees is the form's design. So obviously we have to design the form. So to do that, we have an online form designer. So when we create a new application, it creates a simple form uh, with one section and one field on it, because you have to have one field. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start editing this basic template um, and we're going to put some more stuff into it. So um, the first field I'm going to actually call name of client project. Um, I can also look at the design of the, the forms. You get quite into the design of these things and making them look nice. You can set different widths. In this case, I'm going to make it full width. And because it's the first field, it has to be compulsory because uh, you've got to put something in there. Otherwise, you know, where are you starting? So the next field, if you remember from the form, um, is actually the, um, the project owner. So the project owner is um, a particular kind of field called a choice field. So we saw a text field, that's quite simple. Number field, date fields, they're fairly obvious. Declaration fields are what, if you're a techie, you'd call them uh, a Boolean field, but basically they're yes or no. Um, but probably the most important field inside of Cicero is a choice field, because choice fields can basically change the way the workflow actually goes. So if I'm gonna create a choice field, I can just simply type stuff in. So we've got John in here, Phil, Roy. And in fact, you could, you could actually copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff in here and create your field. Um, your field is then created and ready to go. But typically when I'm creating fields, what I actually wanna do is I wanna get that information from uh, another system. Um, I don't typically wanna to have to type all these things in. I want them managed by something else. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a bit of that low code we talked about. And to do low code, um, I use these things called data action fields. Now, all a data action field is, is somebody has created, programmed a little tiny bit of functionality. And in this case, what the functionality does is it goes and looks at my network directory and gets me a list of managers. That's all this does. This is a very, very simple one. Um, now, I need to say what I want to do with that information, and I can cheat by just saying, I've done something similar before. Let's just use that. And when I do that, this is then going to automatically create me a field that actually brings in the managers in our organization. So that's a little bit of low code. Um, and you can see it's very easy. So once your developers have done a little bit of code and created an integration with something else, be it your PMS, your CRM or whatever, 
as somebody who's a forms designer and worried about business processes, I don't have to worry about the code, I can just go ahead and use it. So um, I'm not gonna bother going through every single field on here. So I'm gonna use a little trick that Cicero provides, which is I can actually go and grab in a previous form. And this is, this is very useful, we use this all the time. So I'm gonna grab a form that I did before, um, and I'm gonna upload that, and magically, rather than you watching me go and put in dozens and dozens of sections and dozens and dozens of fields, you can see here's all the stuff that I put in here. So that's our forms design, uh, and we can go and edit and do stuff with it, so that's, that's really handy. But the other thing is, we need to now look at the logic. So that's the form, and now it's the logic. So to do the logic, we use these things called process flowcharts. So flowcharts are something that I actually was educated in the 70s and the 80s, um, and I was taught flowcharts back then as, as part of a, you know, the basics of, of how to go ahead and, and design these things. And we designed the flowchart very much around um, keeping it as simple as possible. So there's a very, very simple workflow. In this case, it starts and it stops. So that's a little bit too simple, so we want to actually put some logic in here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, uh, a decision, and that decision is going to be what you do next. Well, right at the beginning, what we want to do, if you remember, is we are actually the law firm or the lawyer, and we're going to email the client engagement letter. And in fact, this isn't even going to be a decision. This is just going to be a thing that you do. So we have a yes and a no path. And in this case, we're only going to use the yes path. So what happens when we start it is we want to send an email. So I grab something that looks very much like an email. I stick it on there. And I'm going to email um, the uh, new client engagement letter to my um, uh, so I can email to our client. Now, in order to do that, I need to have a client engagement letter. So what I need to do is I'm gonna jump away from this and I'm actually going to go into Word and we're gonna look at um, this no code document automation that I'm talking about here. So how does that work? Well, I'm gonna open up a standard Word document. So this is a document that is nothing in it at all. It's a standard Word document. Um, but what I've done is I've just marked it in order to make this work. I'll be saying with bits that are um, from my form. So in order to do that, I first have to put this into Cicero. So I have this add-in. You only need this add-in if you are going to be doing automation. So normal users don't need this. It's just me as, um, as a, an automator. So when I stick this into the system, there's actually a whole area that we covered called knowledge, uh, knowledge management. So I can have you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of automations. But in this case, we're going to skip all of that and we're just going to submit that straight into our knowledge library. So I've taken a standard Word document and I've submitted it into Cicero. So now I can jump back into my workflow system and I can go and use that template. So I'm going to click on the templates button, uh, decide which library I'm going to go and use. And I can have multiple libraries in my system. And here is my client engagement letter, this one here that I've just uploaded. So if I just Click on here, you'll see I've got an add option on here. And in fact, I could actually add multiple documents into this workflow. Um, but to keep our demo nice and simple, I'm just going to be automating the one document here. So I'm going to add that in. So I've now added my new template. Um, so I can see it from here. And actually can go to this template now and actually do some automation. Um, now, this automation is going to allow me to put some logic into this document. Now this is very, very important and it's the same process whether you're doing a simple document or a complex document. So this is my automated document and you'll see the big difference here is I have a thing called the fields menu. Um, in fact, I'm just going to shut down the one behind it here because it can be confusing if you have two documents up. And we'll just stick that over here. Now this um, fields menu holds all the fields that we have in our form. So if we just quickly jump back to our form, so in our form, we have name, client, project, project owner, managing work profile, et cetera. And these fields appear in here. And we have all these sections up here and these sections appear on this list here. And if I add in, I can actually add in fields um, using my automation and they will magically appear in the form. I can add them in the form and they will magically appear in the document. But what I need to do now is I need to basically put information I'm capturing from my form into my customized document. So I need to put in the full company name, and then put in a return and then the company address and then put in a return. And then for the partner, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, I think we call the partner the, uh, what did we call him? We call it the manager. So I'll put in the manager. Now there's lots of different kinds of lists that I can have here, but I'm just gonna have a simple list of partners and that's gonna add that in there. 
um, and I can go through and, um, uh, and add that in there as well. I've also got um, partner down here as well. And in fact, I can actually just drag that, um, take a copy of that and just, if I'm using it lots of times, just go ahead and put that in there and it'll appear in there. So I can go ahead and I can automate this document. Now, the only other thing I want to show you on this is the rates. Now we're gonna have a different rates table depending upon what kind of work it is. So we're gonna look at the work profile and then using our simple list option again, we're gonna say, okay, for financial transactions, we're gonna charge 200 pounds an hour. If it's real estate, we're gonna charge 150 pounds an hour. Managing client money, well, I don't know, say 180 pounds an hour um, and et cetera, et cetera. So you can see, you can just type these in and create yourself a, uh, a list. And if it's anything else, let's charge 100 pounds an hour and confirm that. Um, so now we've got a, a rates table that's included inside of our document. So we can create optional text, optional profiles and put the data in there. So that is our document automated and ready to go. So in terms of the automation process, um, I'm not actually gonna bother keeping that. Um, I'm finished that, I've done the automation. The other thing I want to look at is the email automation, which is almost as important as the document automation. So again, I'm going to go back to our business process. And this time I'm going to worry about what's going to be sent out. So when I'm sending out the, oh, forget the mistyping, but it just shows that it's real. Um, who am I sending this document to? So I'm going to send the client documents to the client. Now the client information we captured on the form under the field um, email address. We're capturing that and what template do we want to use? So we choose which email template we're going to use. And then what we're going to send, what we're going to send is the KYC document we've just uploaded. We're going to send that and we're going to convert that to a PDF. So once I've set that up, what I now need to do is to go and edit my email. So my email needs to be edited and it looks exactly the same or very, very similar to the documents automation we saw before. So we've got fields, we've got the fields list, we've got the sections on here. And again, I can just, if I delete that, if I just click on name of client project, it's put into there. And again, I can put in some logic in here as well. So if I wanted to have different logic for different types of um, a work profile, I can select the work profile, start and end. And then in there, I can say, what do I want to appear um, if it is a financial transaction? So I can put automation in there as well. So that is um, the, uh, how we email the, uh, the emails and create the emails. Um, so if I just jump back to, um, uh, just jump back to uh, my workflow, um, again, I can go ahead and show you all the things, but I'm going to skip a step and just show you one that I've done previously. And this is what our completed workflow looks like. And again, this is highly simplified, um, but this is an example of a simplified workflow. So we email in the client engagement letter, we then send the, the, uh, uh, the engagement letter back to the client, um, submit the, the risk assessments, um, send it for partner approval. And this is where we see a little bit of logic here. So the logic here is quite simple. So um, the partner says, I've investigated this and I'm happy. He's gonna go down the yes path, which is the one in green. Um, but if he says, I am not happy, it's gonna go down the no path um, and it goes to here. And if you wanna see what they say, you can just click on edit alert and you can see there's the text that we've entered in there. And that's how you enter it. You can literally just copy and paste and stick images in there um, and create your own notifications. So it's a very fast demonstration, um, but what I've shown you there is an entire workflow process, including document and email automation um, and a bit of low code stuff. Um, low code you only ever need if you're doing things like integrating with third party systems, like for instance, Active Directory, or if you've got some very specific forms logic. So quite often people say, do you know what, on a Thursday, if it's John, um, you know, he never comes in, so could you redirect it to Dave? And that's the kind of stuff you can't put into a package, and it's where you have to maybe break out and do a bit of forms-based code. But it's really 99 or 95% of the work that you're doing, um, you can actually do simply using the automation um, within the system. So thanks very much for listening. Um, that's the end of my demonstration, and I'll hand back to John. Thanks, Phil. So that was a whirlwind tour of, uh, of Cicero in, in a very quick sort of time scale. But hopefully, um, if we could rerun that sort of uh, poll now, please, uh, just to see whether people now understand a little bit more about workflow and whether it indeed is, is applicable or not, or not sure still, um, then, then that would be great. Just leave that on for a few more seconds. Okay, thank you. And uh, um, in terms of the poll, 
if we can, the results were, we, we, initially it was 54% uh, were, were yes, um, the remainder were no, now it's 70% yes and 20% no. So um, slightly, uh, obviously we've, we've got the message across, Phil, because more and more people now understand it than they did before. So that's Thank John, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, obviously we, we chose KYC, not for any other reason other than it was a, a good way of demonstrating the, uh, the the ability of the Cicero system, but you know our customers are using it for all sorts of different tools and tasks and, and processes, um, and quite often we don't know what they're using it for. So we have different customers that some that that, that really want to be trained on how to use Cicero to develop from scratch their own applications. They're probably our bigger firms, uh, and then we've got sort of uh, our mid, mid firms, some some of which. Uh, want a bit of both, a bit of assistance with certain processes, and then our smaller firms that basically just want us to do the processes for them and then just deliver whatever it is they're looking for. Um, so, you know, it's all about imagination, really. You know, quite often IT departments are tasked with, with questions, you know, we'd love to do this, but I'm not sure how to do it. Cicero is perfect for that sort of thing. So, obviously, there are lots of do document automation tools, and template management systems on the market. We, we sell those, some of those as well. Um, but what we like about Cicero is that it's 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 a configurable tool. It's you can almost let your imagination run riot, and you can then develop the application that you're looking for. So what we've found is that some customers, you know, particularly on the KYC, have developed some very complex um, processes and that are very bespoke to them because everybody has different systems they integrate with and that they're using. Cicero is ideal for that because you can be flexible. And as I say. The, the thing we like about Cicero also is that things change, you know, processes need to change, governance needs to change. Cicero can be amended quite easily to reflect those um, those, those ongoing sort of uh, requirements. So let's just um, take a couple of minutes just to answer any questions. Um, let's go to the question section just to see what's coming. So, yeah, one, one question that we've got is, um, how long does it uh, take to learn how to use Cicero, to develop Cicero, I'm guessing, you mean? Um, well, obviously, the two sides is how long does it take to learn how to develop stuff in Cicero and how long does it take users to use things in Cicero. Um, I'll do the second one first. Um, I'll give a good example. We did we implemented a system for a KYC system um, about five years ago for a top 100 firm. Um, we did it in six weeks end to end. Um, it was rolled out to the firm. I think they have about 400 staff um, and nobody got any training on a Monday. Um, everyone had to do this way. This is how you're doing it from now on and you couldn't open the matter without it and nobody had any training whatsoever. Wouldn't suggest that is a perfect approach, but you know, it's filling in forms and pressing buttons and anyone can do that. In terms of learning how to um, design forms and do stuff, that's quite an iterative process. So we never sort of sit down a client and say, let's teach you every single feature and function we've got, um, simply because there are so many. So um, we take an iterative approach and we'll basically help you solve your problem and we'll work with you to solve your problem. And basically the best way to learn something is to do something. Um, so we teach you how to design forms, we teach you how to um, uh, design the workflows as you're going through the process, and we teach you, tip, you know, the, the, the tips and tricks that, uh, that we obviously know as well. Um, simple workflows are easy, but quite often they can get complicated, uh, and also give you some advice along the way of maybe you're overcomplicating it or maybe you're oversimplifying it, um, and then talk about more advanced things like advanced document automation, uh, calculated fields, all those kind of things that you need as and when you need it. Um, there's actually some online uh, demos on YouTube. Um, so as well as, the, as well as the demos that you can go on Cicero.com, if you go to YouTube, there's a training program uh, on document automation. Um, so if you go to uh, YouTube, put in Cicero, um, you'll find there is a, uh, a whole thing on there. It runs for about an hour. Um, and I've known people go through that, in fact, a lot of our users have gone through that process of learning how to do automation just using those videos and then just come to us when they get a bit stuck. Um, and we provide a bit of support. So, um, you know, people can get up and running um, in just a few days um, in terms of knowing the, the basics and being able to create stuff. Um, in terms of being a complete expert on it, 
um, it's a it's a product that's under continual development so we're always coming up with new ideas and stuff so um, with all of our clients we have an ongoing relationship with them um, and we, we do a weekly newsletter that goes out and says here's the new you know, here's all here's any bugs that we found we're very honest um, and here's all the new features <clears throat> and um, you know you can have training courses whenever you need them um, but the best way to learn is on the job thanks Phil well we, we have some more questions but I'm afraid we've, we've, we've gone over the time um, that we allocated so I'd just like to thank everybody for their for, for their time today I uh, hope you found this session useful um, there is a few questions we'll come back to you individually on and uh, and, and, and help uh, answer those. But um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, sort of raise them uh, individually. Um, more than happy to jump on a one-to-one -one session because as you can see, it's quite a big system and can do quite a lot. So it's probably one of those that you need to have a one-to-one -one session with to understand it in more detail. But thanks, Phil. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much for your time and attention today. And look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.